Hey. So last time we spoke, I had put the CB550 engine back together and I stuffed it back into the frame. I established that the next step was to begin rewiring the bike with an M unit and all that entails. I would have to wait till I had the money to buy all of those supplies and therefore the CB could honestly go back into storage for the time being. I think the very next day I rode the CB back to my storage unit. Oh, fun fact, while the engine was apart, the Lancer had a starting issue which is why it's parked here. I couldn't use it. On top of that, the insurance was still off on the other two bikes and the registrations were pretty much expired on them as well. Basically all of my vehicles were out of commission, but I got lucky because I was loaned an electric bike straight from the manufacturer, so <laughs> look out for the overview on this thing. But I want to update you first on the old Rocket 550. Yes, that's the name of it, unless you got something better, chump. I actually do quite a few updates, not only when I'm wrenching, but also when I just buy stuff. So the guys over there saw a bunch of updates coalesce into this pile of parts you see here. Right, what do we got? From left to right, crimpers that I still don't know how to use properly. Fuses, fuse holders, battery cables, turn signals, tail light slash plate holder, ring terminals, a clutch lever and perch, demountable wire connectors, the M unit itself, a lithium regulator, a lithium battery, OEM Honda style connectors, a Cognito Moto electrical tray, a GPS tracker, and a wiring kit for the M unit. Most of the other things that I might need I pretty much already had left over from the BMW. I just want to say before we start, uh, this is like this is kind of like broad strokes. I mean, I go into detail, but this is not like a guide. If you want like a full overview of the M unit and you want to hear me tell you about it, then go to my BMW build. I got like three episodes. I'll put them in the description if you really want to know what an M unit is about, because that was when I was learning about it too. But I figured that a lot of people who are watching this series already saw the BMW, so they pretty much up to speed on it. Also, if you want to know how to wire up a vintage Honda step by step, Classic Octane has a really good video. So with that, with that said, let's jump into it. At this point, the FC1 was at my parents' house for occasional rides, but by this time, my Lancer was also back up and running, so I just daily that. One Saturday, I went ahead and I rode the CB back to my parents' house from storage. I wouldn't need to work on a bike just yet, though. I could arrange the electrical tray in the backyard since that's the hub of the whole system. The great thing is that I would be able to get rid of all of this stuff and the jankiness that it brings. So visually, it would also clean up the triangle area. <laughs> that I would definitely need though is the starter solenoid, this little guy right here. Right, let's hit up the now ant infested workbench out back. The starter solenoid, the M unit, and the battery will be the big components for the tray. I thought it would be big enough to put the regulator in there as well, but it looks like I have to stick that on the underside of the tray. This is the orientation that I came up with for now. For now the battery had the positive terminal on the left side, closer to the solenoid. I'd have to drill the mounting holes, so first up was for the M unit. It was nice because the final drill bit that I used was tight enough to allow the bolts to thread the tray. You know, I'll be using nuts in the final stage, but at this point where things are constantly getting taken in and out, it's kind of nice and easy. As for the battery and solenoid, no need to be extra about it, a grommeted hole in the zip tie. Everything was solidly mounted up and off to a good start. In order to start visualizing how this would work on the bike, I went back out and began removing the original harness, which was very satisfying. Okay. 
Here's what I need to keep. These wires here go to the start and run controls on the, on the right handlebar. I want to keep that. Moving down the bike, obviously you need the coils here. This is a ground point held in by a bolt. And then this connector is for the key, which we're gonna hold on to for the moment. These are the connections for the crank sensor slash electronic uh, ignition points thingy down there. And you wanna keep those, but everything else, sayonara. I'm pretty sure 76 is a unique harness from the years before and the years after for the 550. So this might actually be useful to somebody if they're willing to fully repair it. So if you want it, you could just hit me up, I guess. I find it interesting that the previous owner didn't use a weld on tail hoop, but instead used this like squared off bolt on bar that they made. Granted, I have, I have no interest in doing a tail hoop myself. So I've opened up the triangle area, but I'm leaving those like welded on brackets to remount all of the stock stuff. You know, most, most people chop that stuff off, but this build is not to that level. And I'd like to, like to leave the bike, you know, with the possibility to be returned to somewhat stock by someone, at least for now. I don't want to go hacking up the frame, you know, the previous owner chopped off the, the stock seat mount and I'm still angry about it. Okay, back to the ant farm. Cables. Honestly, the hard-ish part. Like, it's not difficult, but you really gotta think about how you route them so you don't burn the vehicle to the ground. But you don't, you, don't, you don't gotta go with the first idea that you have. Case in point, I was brainstorming a positive connection first. The format is to go from the battery positive to the solenoid, and then from there, from the solenoid, to the M unit. Cool. Since the hot side of the solenoid and the hot side of the battery are bumping uglies, the, the cable will have to be extremely short in there. In fact, it wouldn't even really be a cable. <laughs> it would be this monstrosity that I then tried very hard to solder together. Yeah, you remember the hunters from Halo? Kind of reminds me of their legs. <laughs> Eventually I got it soldered up and that honestly made it worse because now it had zero flexibility. It was basically a solid piece of metal.
So I scrapped that idea, thank God, and flipped the battery around in a tray. The positive post was now on the far side, allowing for a more traditional battery cable. Right, so now that the solenoid has power, it's time to piggyback it into the M unit through a th uh, 40 amp fuse, ideally. So I grabbed the wiring kit and immediately remembered that my inline fuse hole is already pre-wired, so I don't need to do it. <laughs> oh yeah. So I went and I grabbed the fuse holders and immediately realized that I bought too thin of a gauge of a wire to securely power the whole M unit, you know what I mean? I mean, this is 16 gauge and I should, I should use 12 or 10. Ah, shit. Well, my BMW M unit isn't actually fused, and these things are pretty damn tough, so I could definitely skip a fuse, at least for now, you know? So I grabbed that old ground cable, cut it down, made it red, and I got it in there. Nice and clean, and it won't melt. So remember how I said I would mount the regulator rectifier underneath the tray? I zip tied it for now. In practice, I'll either bolt it or use adhesive. But anyway, that red wire is the charging wire. A good spot to jack it into the system is the M unit positive post, especially in my case where I want to keep the battery terminals as basic as possible. So I cut off the spade terminal and I just replaced it with a ring terminal. Soldered it, heat shrinked it, threw it on there. Oh, also for the ground, here's what I did. I just used more old negative cable and I sent it backwards to the mounting hole of the tray itself. So what this will do is ground the tray and you know, kind of ground the chassis a little bit, but you still want to do a chassis ground. So this grounds the tray, uh, and since the M unit grounds itself via the mountain bolt holes on it, I sent the ground from the M unit using the new negative cable down to the factory chassis ground, where it, where it grounds from um, from the factory. So that, does that make sense? Good. Yeah, I, I just didn't feel good about launching a negative over all of those positives, so I just sent it backwards. Okay, back to the bike. We got M unit power and I felt pretty good about the packaging, but you can't actually do anything with it until you have a lock input. For example, an ignition key switch. So to adapt the stock key to the M unit, all you really need, to, really need to do is take 12 volts positive power and send it to the switch via the red wire and then send it back to the lock input via black if we're, if we're talking OEM on the colors. So red wire gets a ring terminal at one end, black wire just gets a strip end because that's the one that's going into the M, M unit. And both of those go to an OEM style Honda connector for the ignition switch connection. By this point I had switched the black wire for a red one of a thinner gauge, but it's still, it's still the same setup. The key is just kicking back a 12 volt signal to the M unit when you turn it. Key on power. And I know someone's gonna ask before they finish the video, yes I plan to loom everything together. Calm down, I just wanted to get it running first. Key on power and knowing that the undersea clearance was very good meant that I was pretty happy to stop for the day. I've been working for like 10 hours at that point. I came back to work on it the next day, but the weather was very uncooperative, in a word. Still, the agenda was a charging system, which I had done whilst dealing with off and on rain. Anyway, this black wire is a 12 volt reference wire for the regulator, which was wired into the lock input using one of those demountable connectors. This tells the, regul the regulator the system voltage for charging it. If you recall, the previous owner had cut the charging system connector, so I would have to make my own using that bag of um, OEM style ones. The left two stripe wires are for the oil and clutch sensor, but they were never connected to begin with, so I just removed them. The green wires are the grounds. There's two coming from the regulator and one coming from the alternator. So you can see one ground is going into the cluster, so I just removed it and then put the white one in and then I just made a dedicated ground connector for all three grounds. Which you're gonna see, but first I have to repair the wires.
<laughs> so this morning I'm trying to get this fucking bike wired up to start and run, but yo, the rain is just fighting me today, man. Like I thought it'd be overcast and cool outside, you know, a little bit of drizzle here and there, but nah, it's just full on raining right now. <laughs> and um, I'm, it's like it's off and on too, so it's just a roller coaster of like, ah, oh, shit, I gotta run inside and or I go come back out. Oh, false alarm! It stopped raining and it just starts raining all over again. You know, shit is getting wet, starting to rust and whatnot. So, yeah, here I am hiding in my car. I'm just keeping an eye on the radar so I know when I could come back out and start working on that turret out there. So, so far, we got key on power. And the starter circuit is mainly hooked up. I just got to hook up the um, actual switch at the handlebar. But if I take a wire and I ground the start input, I actually do get starter so i just have to send this basically up to the actual starter button then i'll work work on the uh start stop so i have all of the wires for the regulator rectifier the whole charging system hooked up so i got the wires coming from the actual alternator coming up here connecting to the reg rec had to make the connector uh got the grounds from the actual um, field coil coming into this little connector here and then the two grounds from the reg rec which are grounded here no joke i probably had to run from the rain like six different times eventually i got fed up this was <laughs> this was my last day off of the week and i don't i don't know when i would be able to get back at this thing and i wanted to hear this thing fire up regardless of what i had to do so i'm absolutely tired of getting the rain on so I basically fast-tracked the um, plan to get this thing running. So here's, here's what I did, right? So I already showed y'all my fake uh, starter switch, which is I just ground this wire. So this is going to start input, just ground it anywhere on, anywhere on the frame. It then sends power to start output, which sends power to start a solenoid, which then bridges the gap between um, these, big, these big wires right here and um obviously runs the starter now for the starter circuit is it's these two wires here so normally these would be like these will have a positive circuit but you would use a ground for the m unit so basically this black one would run to a ground and then this yellow and red one so the ground the ground from the black will go up to the switch up here then the, the yellow will come back and then go to input Right, so that's all you have to do with that if you wanted to get the starter button working. This is a lot quicker just having this wire that I could just ground real quick, right? Especially because I don't have the handlebars I want. I don't know what length wire, stuff like that. Now the ignition is a lot more sloppy at the moment because I basically fast tracked um, getting this thing running. So here's how the ignition system would normally work, right? So you have these black, these two black wires. These go up to the handlebar the um, st uh, engine start stop switch right so you hit the switch you put it on run that then cuts power sends power to this uh, black and white which then sends through these black and white to the coils now that's how the coils get power they go directly through the actual handlebar switch okay so what I did was I basically just used a connector plug these two in and then I have this red wire that's going back to the ignition out so ignition system is getting power it's getting sloppy power but it's getting power uh, so that's there boom so you got the two blacks I also have power going to the ignition uh, like the points the ignition system the actual thing that spins on the crank I forget the name right now the points plate basically uh, and I also have power going to that right here because I needs a constant 12 volts so all of that is getting power the coils are getting power the actual points is getting power and then the signal for the points which goes down through here which is the blue and yellow wires right here and uh you can see it's all burnt up this is actually when the bike caught fire um when the gasoline leaked out i told that story it's crazy uh but yeah so it goes to the blue and yellow blue and yellow with the signal wires for each respective coil so, if I were to turn the key, the unit is on, and then ground the starter, it starts right up. Really, the gas.
gas in it, so it runs like that. But so it wasn't actually the gas; it's just that I had the choke on. So I got it running on the new setup, uh, but this is just part one of the wiring. Basically, I still have to A, clean up the wiring that I've already done, loom it up, you know, test the tape, shit like that. B, actually wire the ignition stuff up permanently rather than the way I slapped it together just to, you know, prove a point. <laughs> C, get the final controls uh, on the handlebar so I can wire those in. D, finish up the lighting circuits. Uh, e, set up and explain that in Voxia GPS tracker because I think it's pretty damn cool. Uh, F, probably something that I can't remember at the moment. So F it. But yeah, this isn't over yet. And I'm definitely moving faster than I expected when it, when it comes to like buying the stuff for the next few electrical steps. So that thing, I think that next part is gonna come out a lot faster than I thought it would. Any questions, you could just leave in a comment and I'll see you in part two slash episode seven.